So here we are again on the mountaintop to show you a new piece of video creation technology. It's 120 volt DC powered lighting. It may seem strange that a lion would worry about lighting and power line frequency more than cameras. It's very important to have lighting and power that doesn't operate in audio frequencies because you want to be able to hold on to the light and have the light very close to the actor. It would take a very powerful light to have this light mounted far away. But with DC powered lighting, we no longer have audio interference. Just look at this. It goes right up against the microphone with no noise. Now take a listen to what conventional 60 Hertz AC lighting sounds like. This is a test with the conventional AC inverter powered lighting. 60 Hertz AC. And you can probably hear it. You can probably hear the AC humming noise. So this is a test of the standard 60 Hertz AC powered lighting. Now we're going to switch back to the DC lighting. Now we're back on the DC powered lighting. No noise. We're currently running a 26 watt compact fluorescent light off 120 volt DC. CFLs work just as well in DC as they do on AC. Inside the light bulb is a standard bridge rectifier which converts AC to DC. The trick is getting 120 volt DC power on a mountaintop. It turns out that inside the standard household AC inverter is actually a 120 volt DC power source. The inverter converts the battery voltage to 120 volts DC before it actually inverts it. So all you have to do is find the bridge rectifier inside the inverter and connect the wall outlet to that instead of the inverting output. And you've got a portable 120 volt DC power source. The problem is it's still not as bright as running these light bulbs off of household AC. The standard inverter doesn't have an actual voltage regulator. The voltage depends on battery power. So at 12 volts, you get about 130 volts out of it. But the battery normally runs at 11 volts. So we're actually running at only about 110 volts. The actual hardware inside the AC inverter could generate 130 volts off of any battery voltage, but it doesn't seem to use a very good regulator. It's very tempting to rip the parts out of the inverter and make our own constant voltage supply at 130 or maybe 140 and see exactly how far we can overclock these CFLs. To find out if these light bulbs were affected by DC or AC, we actually modified a few CFLs to bypass their internal rectifiers so they would only run on DC. So let's switch to one of the modified CFLs and see if there's any difference in the brightness. And now we're using a modified compact fluorescent light, which has had its internal bridge rectifier bypassed, so it only works on DC. If you plug this into an AC power source, it'll explode. And uh, there actually doesn't seem to be any difference in the brightness based on the naked eye. It should also be noted that CFLs take a long time to warm up outdoors. When they first start up, they're actually quite dim, so you have to wait a few minutes to get to full brightness. The theory behind modifying these lights for DC was that inside the light bulb, there's actually an inductor and a resistor in series with the AC input. And those are designed to correct the power factor and make the light more efficient when running on AC. But running on DC, all they do is act like resistors. We never had the balls to actually probe the light bulb when it was plugged into a wall outlet to actually find out exactly what voltage it was running at in the DC section. But judging by the brightness of the modified bulb, the voltage was obviously very close to 120 and it wasn't really being reduced by the inductor and the resistor. Exactly how long this light can run on batteries, we don't exactly know. So we've only run these for about 10 or 20 minutes before recharging the battery. So now that you've heard the advantage of using DC power for video lighting and the extreme brightness of using compact fluorescent lights, let's all start making our videos with 120 volt DC power.